Uh, Speaking of of ULA and the Vulcan in ULA. Wow. Guess what, guys? We have some news that came out this week. So the phase today. two of a contract of basically the next round of D- United States Department of Defense contracts. Uh, it was last year, year and a half ago, they had phase one, which was ULA, SpaceX, Blue Origin with their New Glenn and um, and uh, North of Grumman with their Omega rocket were vying for these next, you know, the, the big, these are like the big, big contracts worth billions of dollars. Um, in total. So uh, the Department of Defense. So this includes uh, Air Force, NRO, um, and basically anything that's like potentially, um, you know, what's that called? Uh, <laughs> I'm blanking right now. Uh, secret? Top secret? Classified. There we go. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> any classified thing uh, could be some of these things. So the, the phase two ended up being one. Um, so that they then down selected um to the the two that will actually do it it was a 60 40 split this was decided ahead of time that it would would be a 60 40 split as far as uh how much it's worth um and ula won the 60 percent split and spacex won the 40 percent split which surprised a lot of people Hmm. so those people that are saying you know a lot of this could be politicking right a lot of this could be straight up politics are involved and that's why ULA is able to get 60% is one of the big arguments. But the other thing that people don't realize is they had an actual, I, I should probably try to find this, but they had an actual like procurement list of like the requirements and how they're going to weight these contracts. And at the bottom, the least, the thing that was least on their list was price because they don't care really as much. How much does this cost? The priorities are like, you know, accuracy, Blah, 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 blah. I, I should find it. The, uh, you guys ask questions while I do some Google searching. <laughs> you mean the, the United States Defense Department is willing to spend more money than they have to? <laughs> yes. That's surprising, <laughs> actually. Wasn't that, yeah. who's it, John Glenn that talked about that or somebody? Or was it Neil Armstrong or someone that's like, the thing they were afraid of the most is that this, the whole thing they're sitting on was built at the lowest possible cost, like with the lowest bid yeah. that oh, ever yeah. came in. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. Um, I want to find the, gosh dang it, I can't find the the thing um, that shows the, the, the bids, how you bid on it. Um, but the cool RFP. thing about this, what was that? The RFP process? Yeah, because there's actually a whole thing that, that shows um, how, they, how they procured and like what the actual, you know, thing was but um one of the one of the things i wanted to talk about this does mean that spacex one of the things that will be coming out of this um is that spacex will now be getting that cool new vertical launch integration stand at kennedy space center do you remember a while ago i showed you that um uh 39a launch like draw, pad uh, vertical or integration right? yeah exactly and it's gorgeous let me show you i'll try to find the the render here um there we go so um this was a contract that um, popped up. I don't know one was yeah. That, this was last year to to ex- extend the payload fairing and have vertical launch integration skills, meaning that they can you know take a satellite, keep the satellite vertical the entire time, all the way from assembly all the way out to the launch pad, put it up on top of the v- the rocket while the rocket is vertical, um, and that's a big deal for these national security payloads and stuff like that too. Because some of them, a it's you have to, you know, if you have to do it horizontally and then lift it up vertically, you have to, a lot of loads on the, you know, on an axis that you would normally not have to worry about. Um, but also for just security purposes, you can keep it inside the fairing the entire time and cart it out there in the fairing. You never have to deliver a payload and have it, you know, be integrated into a fairing by technicians. You can do all of that kind of offsite almost and then roll it out vertically, stick it up inside there. Um, so this will be what 39A ends up looking like. And this also means we're going to see the extended fairing for Falcon Heavy, too. Mm. So a taller fairing now um, is likely what's going to happen with, with this contract, because that's they re- required those two things in order to basically win this contract. So, um, yeah, so get ready. So that, for some... that launch tower thing you were showing there, again, forgive my third grade understanding, but that oh, the great. tower piece itself moves and the rocket mm-hmm. stays there? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so it, it will move back there, and forth. You and that's, load up the thing, and then the tower 
goes away. Yep. And that's how ULA has done things a lot. Like ULA's launch pads are almost always like the rocket portion kind of stays there. You know, they'll roll the rocket out to the pad and then they'll have this big, v, uh, like a integrated integration facility, basically that, that rolls out, you know, and then it rolls back and we're finally going to see SpaceX be doing that. Um, and so 39A is going to be changing a lot, you know, and okay sorry hang on so <laughs> <laughs> so so they roll the rocket out without the payload and fairing on it the payload yep. and fairing is in this integration thing yep and then they slide it over and integrate exactly on the thing yep yep so how do they get it into the integration stand so into the integration stand i think they they drive it up vertically and then roll Just it up on a smaller on, yeah some kind of smaller crawler type of thing yeah. i don't actually know what the mechanism is um, I don't know if we know the plans for that exactly, but then there's a crane inside of the vertical integration facility that will pick up the fairing. Then it'll move out to the pad and and drop it down on top of the rocket. Okay. And be integrated that way. So it'll be a pretty massive change in in the way SpaceX handles those launches. But that also is a good thing commercially too. You know, that's a, now a commercial option. Some it's not probably something that's that necessary per se for an average satellite, but that can open up options that like, hey, we can now do vertical integration of your satellites. If your satellites, you know, want to be engineered in that way, they could now reach a market that they couldn't reach commercially, as well as obviously these these defense contracts, too. So yeah, I think that's when pretty is, exciting stuff. When is Jeff Bezos going to do his own Starlink thing and have Elon launch it on SpaceX <laughs> rockets? <laughs> well, you know that they are planning, he, they're planning to do, uh, Satellite Constellation 2. Is that OneWeb or is that a different company? It's a different one. Yeah, yeah there's actually, web, that, that's what gets me is there's a few of these web. that are trying to go up. Yeah. Two yeah. Web. Two Web. Yeah. yeah, that is, that's kind of the scary thing too is like, yeah, there's multiple. And if we have, yeah. yeah that's get Swifty saying it's actually Amazon. So the Amazon Constellation. Uh, yep. Yeah, now they would yeah. be the ones because they already own what, 40% of the internet with AWS. Uh, that would be a bit of a monopoly more than they already are. <laughs> right. Well, and they, I should they, show... they own the services that are running on the internet and the access to the internet. <laughs> yeah. That's getting yeah. scary. And scary the grocery store that you is. get your food from. I did want to point out this <laughs> That's is. True. God, yeah. You're right. Uh, uh, um, this is how ULA does things uh, with the vertical integration. So they actually roll out the upper stage. Like it's integrated onto the rocket gets stacked basically. And oh, then okay. looks like a giant um, coffee mug. Yeah, that's the bottom half basically of their <laughs> five meter fairing. Um, and so then then on top of that, the, the fairing payload will come out vertical as well. And um, I'm trying to think of a, a payload that would be like that. Um, yeah, and then and then it gets stacked on top of their thing. So and oh, and to mention, by the way, one of the interesting things that people are a little bit confused by is, you know, ULA won all this money for a rocket that's never flown. Because they bid Vulcan on this. And, you know, that's one of the things SpaceX is like, hey, we're showing you that our success of a rocket that is already flying Falcon Heavy, Falcon 9. Here's our stuff, you know, <laughs> like here's our history. Um, they also now will get this like, you know, it ends up being uh, the defense Department of Defense will get gain access to like every the whole fleet, the whole fleet operations. So they really get to go over all the vehicles with a fine, fine tooth comb. But it's just interesting that Vulcan was able to win the bigger side of the contract for a rocket that's never flown yet. Hmm. Now, Politics. of course, ULA's, but ULA's argument there is, well, look, we're flying almost everything is heritage hardware for us. Like they're going to be switching yeah. solid rocket boosters to uh, Northrop Grumman solid boosters um, instead of the, I think they're Aerojet boosters right now. Um, they're going to be switching to those that on the Atlas V to prove them out on an Atlas V before they fly Vulcan. The Centaur upper stage is already flying, but it'll be tweaked a little bit and, you know, flying before Vulcan. A lot of the avionics and all that stuff is already flying before it flies on Vulcan. So the only thing that's really that new on Vulcan is the main booster. So by the time Vulcan flies, it'll be like, yeah, we've already flown all of it except for these two engines and this, you know, this tank. So, yeah. I just found it interesting. And it's big news because those are expensive contracts, but they that obviously helps keep pushing the commercial you know, sector forward. It pushes a lot of things forward. So, um, yeah, politicking aside, it's, it's a good news for spaceflight, you know. 
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.